Hello, my name is Damaris Probs, and this is a bit of a montage of my survival experience on a Minecraft Bedrock Edition flat world. Yes, this is day one to day 100. And my god, this has been the biggest video I've ever edited in my life for YouTube. Yes, this was 14 hours long in total. And uh, I've managed to cut it down to an hour, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. But yes, all I'm surviving with is the bonus chest. Am I crazy or what? <laughs> so yes, I know what you're thinking. How is that even possible? Well, it's possible because as you can see in the little clip I'm showing now, I actually added in the ability to get a cauldron for free and a lava tile, a couple of blaze rods and a never wart, which unfortunately I didn't realize the never wart you didn't actually need for what I needed it for, if that makes any sense. You'll see as the video progresses. And also, as you can see, I'm setting up a flat world, nothing different here. But when, as soon as I spawn in, I put myself in game mode S and I save and quit. And I load up a universal Minecraft editor, edit all of this info, and I cannot actually cheat now at all. As in, I can't just hop into creative if I want, it's locked. So if you want to check this out for yourself, you can. It's in the description of the video. You can download it and try it for yourself. And also, the other thing, I um, actually can get obsidian from a stonemason as well. So anyway, day one. This is all we start off with. And unfortunately, I get a bit unlucky and I get acacia saplings. Not really what I wanted. Because <laughs> I need apples, man. And uh, I noticed we only got one apple. So I was a bit of a, a bit of a shame there. Now, the bonus chest is a really good thing because you also get yourself some free torches, right? And you get some crops and you get some mushrooms and other stuff. So you can really start to get your little Minecraft adventure kind of going. Now, the difference between Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Java is villages do not spawn in the flat world. So if you already seen kind of one of these videos before, honestly, forget it because Minecraft Bedrock Edition makes this very very hard and it's a very very challenge if there was a village is nearby i could easily do this in like a few minutes probably <laughs> but yes first things first we make a crafting table out of the wood i don't really need we make some wooden tools and i think we're just going to be ending up going on a bit of a slaughter mission in a minute to get ourselves some food but before i do i just want to plant these couple of um, pumpkin seeds and then plant these couple of carrots as well to get a bit of crops going, I got my apple here. I don't know why I put it in there, but we'll keep that in there. And also you can see I have grown my cocoa beans. So the cauldron is solely to collect rainwater. Again, I didn't. you don't have to have a cauldron. You can remove that if you really want to from the behavior pack that's attached. Um, the main idea of it was just so I don't need to kill, what, seven or eight zombies. Well, you know what I mean, get eight ingots. You know, that'll be so tedious. Free is enough, man. You'll see. It takes forever to just get free ingots. But yes, out of that little slaughter mission, we actually got ourselves quite a bit of meat there, which is quite nice. And I also got some walls so I can make myself a bed, which is pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and make a bit of leather armor just to protect me at night. Because remember, I am playing this on hard. And uh, a couple of shots with an arrow will kill you quite quickly. Um, but yes, what I'm going to do now is start... The first really cool idea I had, and this is kind of like making a, a bit of a trench. Now, what I mean by that is, is basically digging the ground and making like a moat. I think that's what you call it. So if, if you remember in the older days, they used to make castles and they used to put water around a castle to protect it from inventory coming in or whatever. This is kind of what I'm doing here because obviously it's about to come nighttime. I need to make a way that zombies and that can't get me. So they're really stupid, you know, the mobs are in the game. So I thought, I'll just do something like this. That just seemed like the most logical thing to me, really. But yes, I'm obviously going to go around and kill a load of mobs as well, as best I can, um, to hopefully get myself some iron gear and, you know, some new tools and stuff like this, for example. Beautiful. We got ourselves a shovel, but what's on it? <laughs> Silk Touch. <laughs> And I'm breaking free. Unbelievable. I know you guys are probably going to be calling out. Yes, Dan, you probably edited that as well. But yes, obviously I got some bones from um, killing the uh, skeletons as well. And I can grow my first acacia tree. So yeah, pretty much the first day was kill mobs. Get a bit of an idea what's going on here. 
pray and hope that you get some decent gear from these guys and focus on the moat. Um, but yes, look what we just got. Another carrot, which is beautiful. So what I actually did in the end was get all that kind of stuff, if you know what I mean. I didn't, I didn't get really lucky, but I'm happy I got that shovel because that is going to come in use later. But yes, I need to just keep digging this, making trap doors, because this is my technique here. I don't know if anyone's done anything like this before, but mobs think trap doors are full blocks, so they, they will just walk off that and fall down in this hole. So that was my thinking here. And I could just trap pigs, cows, zombies, creepers, you name it down there. So yeah, I need more wood. I need to dig some more. I need to keep placing trap doors. And before you know it, it's sunset time. <laughs> and it's night time again. So yes, literally, this is all I keep doing for a few days is kill mobs, make a moat, chop wood, <laughs> kill mobs, you know, rinse and repeat basically. So yeah, there were some times where it got a bit sketchy and uh, like, as you can see here, I've just slept just because, you know, I, if I die, this is over guys. I, I didn't really say that at the start. If I actually die, it's over. I wanted to be like doing this like a hardcore kind of series. But yes, I actually got myself another shovel, which is identical as the other one, which is again, unbelievable. My luck in this whole run has been insane. I've never seen some of the stuff I've got, and you'll see it in the future. <laughs> but um, yes, I'm getting it equipped here, as you can see, and I've also got myself a bow, and I'm also collecting a load of dirt. But yes, just got to keep planting them saplings, and it finally started to rain. So this is probably like day three now, I would say, or day four, something like that. And uh, yes, rain means the cauldron will actually fill up. And uh, obviously, I'm starting to get a bit more food. Again, chopping trees. Keep rinsing and repeating here. But yeah, we're pretty much here now. But I did notice I could do something with the trap door. And that is, if I place it this way, if I've accidentally fell down or I want to collect some drops, I can just do that, right? And that's how I get up and down, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we go around killing mobs again, as you can see. And I actually end up getting... <laughs> My first piece of iron, like an iron ingot. So I only need two more and I can make myself a bucket, which is pretty, pretty cool. So my crops are beginning to start to grow, which is really, really nice. And uh, with the pumpkins, I'm just turning them into seeds, planting them, bone mealing them with whatever bones I've got, just so I can rinse and repeat and get loads of compost, basically. That's what I want to do, compost all this stuff down. I also decided to chop down all of my trees in my little home area and plant them outside of the area I was living in, just so they don't get in my way. And uh, night has approached, but I just wanted to show you here that the trap is actually working. Look, we got a couple of pigs. We got a zombie in there as well. But yes, I could just literally jump down here, grab all this stuff, kill them and jump back out. Look, very, very handy indeed so yes we're going around all every night basically and killing stuff i just wanted to show you as well creepers are a little bit of a pain with this um mechanic though probably what i should have done is make them either side so i can make them so they couldn't actually see me but yes it's really good though because zombies can actually hit you which is quite nice definitely a little technique i like but yes sometimes uh <laughs> Accidents happen, unfortunately, but yeah, we all know creepers, what they're like. But yes, um, what I'm going to do now is speed this a little bit up, but I kind of constructed a, a bit of a house formation, which is quite nice. So I just went around the whole area um, and left a, a bit of a two, a two wide gap, basically. That's what I was going for, um, just to kind of get a bit of a structure look, as you can see, which is quite nice. Some of the trees are growing, so I'm going to chop down these. I constantly need wood. And I was just killing these, and look who's there! I couldn't believe that there was a baby zombie there, um, especially holding an egg. But yes, he dropped his lovely little helmet. Now gold, if you don't remember, gold is very, very valuable as well. Because I need a golden apple to cure a villager, right? A zombie villager. Also, I need a weakness potion, so how am I going to get that? Hmm. You shall see later on. But yes, any um, crappy armor I get, I just combine it, basically. And uh, try and make something decent out of it. But I don't want to use iron or gold armor because 
um, they can obviously be smelted. Now, this is something I've never ever seen in Minecraft before. A skeleton spawned in with a diamond helmet. Now, I know it's a thing, but it's super, super rare. So I thought I'd just show you that on camera. And I also killed this skeleton as well. And it dropped this bow, which is a lifesaver. Flame and Infinity 1. Now, why is that such a lifesaver? Because flame means I can get flame grilled steak, man. <laughs> yes, uh, no more eating raw meat. So I can use this, but it's got hardly any durability. And get myself a load of cooked beef or pork chops or whatever I want, which is pretty cool. So now I'm going to take this silk um, touch and I'm breaking free shovel and just literally mine out or dig out, I should say, all of this grass. Now, I wanted to do this because I've only got four torches, right? And I need to get some slabs down, basically. And uh, if you didn't know already, you can actually compost down grass. So this is another way of me getting a bit of free bone meal, if you know what I mean. Without breaking those tools. But yes, this with this bone meal, I decided I'm going to grow some grass and get some flowers and stuff. But the main reason is to get the grass so I can get seeds and plant these things. Without the seeds, I can't really do a lot. I need to get loads of bread in the future for villager breeding. And I also need to get a load of cows for meat or, and things like that. And I need the seeds for chickens probably. So I may as well do it. Yes, as you can see, I made a load of acacia slabs, sorry, and uh, I made some doors and stuff, and I just went around and made it a bit more mob-proof. That's what I was trying to go for here. Um, but I think it's a pretty good idea that I did that, because otherwise I would have skeletons and zombies and stuff in my base, which is not really what I want, because I've only got the four torches, right? But yes, I just try to decorate up a little bit, just to make it a bit more homey living, and I give myself a bit more storage. But yes, once again, I ran out of wood, <laughs> so I uh, decided to shut that down. But look who spawned in, guys. Yes, it's the Wandering Trader, and he's got buckets of tropical fish. <laughs> I would love to steal that off you and the sand, mister, but I don't have any emeralds, so I'm going to have to take your leads and your leather from your llamas. Thanks, dude. So, night has approached again, and I decided to kill this gold zombie, and uh, look what it actually dropped. <laughs> yes, uh, it's quite cool that I can edit this, but honestly, this has taken me forever to get that second iron in. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But yes, I, I've completely lost what day this is. It's probably like day 15 or something like that by now. Um, but as you can see, I'm just showing you here. I need a lot of gold and I need one more iron ingot for a bucket. Um, so we're almost there. But look, I've got all of this stuff. If I had a furnace, I could easily smelt this down and uh, be quite wealthy. But yes, I decided to just start rearranging my equipment basically. So there's a little witch here as well and um, I wanted to show you this little clip because I almost actually GG'd it here. Um, I got poisoned and there was a couple of skeletons shooting at me. Um, but that witch is very, very valuable because she actually dropped a health potion. Now, believe it or not, I've already got a couple of water bottles already, but I need the bottles because obviously I can't get sand and make glass without buying it from the wandering trader. So I need any witch bottles I can get, or potion bottles, I should say. And uh, there it is, look, as you can see. And she also dropped some glowstone and um, a gunpowder. Yes, very, very important stuff. I can drink that. And that brings me up to three bottles now. And I can take the water out of the cauldron. And therefore, I can make myself an infinite water source. Once I get myself <laughs> a bucket. So I don't need to rely on rain right now. So I thought that was quite a wise idea, um, just in case I wanted to move the, um, what do you call it? The actual um, cauldron. Yes, so an another night approaches and I kill this Vindicator, which was a captain, and I've got the uh, beautiful fart bubbles um, that we all know and love. So yes, if I was in a village, I could actually set myself off a raid, but unfortunately on Bedrock Edition, there's no villages in a flat world, as I mentioned before. Yes, so a bit more decoration has happened. I've gone around and put a load of logs at the base of the actual house now. Kind of gives it a bit more to look at, I guess. I'm not really a builder, but I wanted to kind of get out of the comfort zone, you know, and actually try and build for once. As 
I can because I've got to waste a lot of time because I'm really relying on the night time on this, which is quite strange. But um, you've got to remember, I am only using wooden tools. I've only got iron gear. So obviously this is super, super, super dangerous. Um, but yes, every night we just go out and try and chop these guys. But unfortunately, DRP forgot to sleep. <laughs> This is the problem. You pay the price with this um, kind of uh, flat world survival thing. You you don't want to sleep, but you have to because those stupid phantoms come out. Even though we're at Y4, I swear they only came out at Y60 and above, if I'm not mistaken. So once again, we're chopping down wood, as you can see, and look at all this stuff we're getting now. We are getting quite... A lot of stuff again this is probably like what day 17 18 something like that nearly 19 i would say maybe um you can see the progression is starting to happen now and i'm getting a load of carrots now i've got a load of pumpkins all of this stuff is in preparation for when i get myself a, a villager and if i get myself a villager but yes still getting myself some grilled steak which is quite nice and uh eventually i decide you know what i'm not gonna run around and kill these cows we're just going to start capturing them and breeding them. I've got the wheat. I may as well just use it. So this is what I actually went for in the end. A little bit of a cow farm. And I thought, you know what? I like my chickens. Let's make <laughs> a little chicken coop kind of bad thing. Um, basically, they'll poop out the eggs and I can just walk under that and collect them. But yes, as you can see, I found myself a couple more cows. And I just started to push in the actual chickens here. I want to show you all this just so you know how I did it. Um, but yes, pretty cool little concept. I thought to actually do this because obviously that's free food in a way. But yes, I can get down to them and uh, easily breed them, which is quite nice. So I spotted this little zombie. Look at it, what he's holding, an enchanted sword. But unfortunately, I didn't get it. Now, I really would like myself an iron looting sword. That's really, really what I would like. Um, but as you can see, I've got a bit of iron gear on me. Now, I'm noticing zombies only seem to spawn in with iron shovels and iron swords. They don't spawn in with any other tier stuff. I thought they summoned in with pickaxes, but maybe that was just me. <laughs> I kind of wish they did in a way for later on. But yes, you can see I've got myself quite a bit of gear now. And I'm constantly repairing, switching different gear and I also made some signs because I was getting a bit confused and I've called that chest gear this one I call rarer items I think I call it yeah and this one I call it wood and the next one is actually dirt <laughs> but I, d I forget that I've actually put things inside it do you know what I mean and this one is supposed to say mob drops but I called it mod drops um Honestly, guys, I was playing this for a very long time. I probably misspelled a few things in this. <laughs> but either way, it's really good fun. Oh, and, and this last chest, I just wanted to call it crops. Well, plants and crops. That's what I called it. Um, it's kind of just a mishmash chest for now, really, though. Um, but yes, that is a bit more organization for me. And I got my composter, got a lid on it and stuff. So now I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little dark room. Now... I obviously got myself one brown mushroom from the actual bonus chest. That's in every single bonus chest, you always get a brown mushroom. So I decided to make this dark box and go ahead and bone meal this uh, mushroom just to make it into a giant brown mushroom. That was my idea, just so I can reproduce it. And I need a brown mushroom for a fermented spider eye anyway. And also, I need mushrooms probably for compost maybe i don't know and it's a new block that i can use now if you remember i actually had a shovel with silk touch on it right now believe it or not i actually had two of these didn't i if you remember at the start so i can actually obtain some of these blocks to use for building but little did i know you can actually compost these blocks down as well and they are give you quite a lot so in all fairness actually Growing a mushroom was a good shout, I think. But yes, the only issue is I need to um, go up the top here and put some slabs down just so I stop um, any hostile mobs spawning. Just because, again, I don't have any torches yet. <laughs> but yes, uh, unfortunately, because it's a dark room, we do get some little baddies in here. 
Um, but yeah, I killed these in prey in the hope that I was going to get myself an iron ingot. And was I successful? Unfortunately not. But I got a gold helmet, which is pretty cool, and I hit level 35. So I decided in the end just to cover the floor in um, slabs as well to prevent that happening again. So yeah, that's my little dark room. So as you can see, I've bred up all these cows, and I can literally shoot these guys now in this pen and get my flame-grilled steak right here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling it that. It's just because I've got flame on this uh, bow, right? But that cow just grew in front of my eyes, which is quite funny um but yes we are getting some lovely food look at that we got 14 of them that's pretty good so another night approaches and look what we got in the sky yet again phantoms <sighs> these things man why did anyone vote for them i swear <laughs> they are so annoying god they genuinely don't do anything on this kind of run or challenge but yes we need more wood as always we're gonna kill more mobs as always but yes i also thought i'll try and capture a um a zombie villager as well because I, I don't know how common they spawn they seem to be quite common though but yes look at my chest now getting absolutely full of different gear so i decided to kill this baby zombie i have no idea why i did this but little did i know <laughs> It actually dropped the last iron ingot I needed, which is fantastic. So yes, that means I can make myself a bucket, and that means I can make myself infinite water, and I can also make a cobblestone generator. So goodbye, wooden gear. We are now on to the Stone Age, which is awesome. So, so good. Honestly, at this stage, I was probably about five or six hours in, and literally all I've had is wooden stuff. You don't know how hard it is and boring and tedious to chop down trees with wooden gear, I swear. It's awful. But yes, I made this little trough thing. Um, I've been playing quite a lot of Java recently. And when you make this, you can actually make an infinite water source with a trough. Um, little did I know on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, it's not a thing. But yes, look at that. We got infinite water, okay? I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but you can obviously take bottles of water. Well, you can take bottles into the water and make bottles of water, but it doesn't consume the water look, which is really, really cool. And yes, I actually had to just make a pickaxe <laughs> as well, which is quite a funny thing. It's the first pickaxe I've made. Um, but yes, with the bottles, I can literally fill up this cauldron with one singular block of water, which is quite nice. Boom. And there we go. We have got infinite water now. So we've got two buckets. But like I was saying, this does not make infinite water. So in the end, I just decided to go for the old school way and just go like, you know, in, in the two by two grid and make an infinite water source like that. I mean, when in doubt, the old school way will always work. Right? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. So now I can take the lava and obviously, as I got infinite water, I can literally grab a bucket of water and make myself a cobblestone generator. So I decide I'll just do it outside of my house just because, one, my house is full of uh, wood. And two, I don't really want to make any mistakes because it's kind of made out of slabs, right? Um, but yes, cobblestone, guys. Woohoo! Oh, my God. This was such an achievement, man, to get cobblestone. Literally, we got cobblestone from a bonus chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is nuts but anyway with that cobblestone i can actually go ahead and make myself stone everything so we've got furnaces now which means i can also make myself torches i can cook all this gear i've been getting i could do a lot of new stuff now as you can imagine just because i literally have a cobblestone generator <laughs> which is awesome so yeah, I decided to cook up some logs first of all, get some charcoal, and like I say, I will eventually put torches around everywhere. I decided to um, baby-proof this a little bit, and hopefully it helps, you know, because I was a bit worried that maybe some mobs or cows or something might fall in the lava as well, and I didn't want any issues with fire, that's all. I was a bit scared because, obviously, my house is completely made out of wood, as I keep saying, and it would go up in flames instantly. But yes, I gotta keep mining cobble, I'm going to end up um, making a, um, a brewing stand. That's what I'm trying to say. And I've obviously got the um, water bottles ready to rock. 
I've got sugar. I need a spider's eye. And um, literally, what I'm trying to make is splash potions of weakness. That's what I'm trying to make. Um, I couldn't quite remember how you make a fermented spider eye, so I had to actually uh, look it up. But it was a brown mushroom, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, thank God I decided to grow a ginormous mushroom. Yes, this paid off a treat. So there is my fermented spider eye. And um, yes, we're going to have to just make the brewing stand now. And we can literally brew this thing up. So obviously that used that one of my blaze rods. And the other one is to basically fuel it. That was the idea. So I made a bit of a boo-boo here. And... Um, Little did I know that we don't need to make awkward potions. So, another thing I could have not put in there was the Never War. Now, I don't actually use the Never War in the end. Um, as you can see, I switch it out and I realize, oh, it's not that. You're supposed to make it like that. So there we go. We've got the Splash Potion of Weakness ready to rock for the zombie villager. So next, you can see I am cooking up some stuff and I decide to... Uh... <laughs> Rename this uh, sign Dirt and a Cobblestone um, because obviously I've been grinding quite a lot of cobblestone now and it's starting to get a bit inventory madness everywhere. I'm getting a lot of different stuff now so I want to keep myself quite organized and I want to know where stuff is. Um, so yeah, I've also cooked up a load of stone as well and I wanted to make myself a grindstone because I started to realize when I was cooking up these things I could actually disenchant this stuff and get some XP because... Who knows? Maybe if I get super lucky, i.e. in the nether, I can get myself some diamonds. I don't know if that is even possible, um, but I would like to try and get myself an enchantment table because um, I'm going to get really high levels. But yes, I disenchant all this stuff to get a bit of XP out of it. Why not? And then I literally cook pretty much all of it up, apart from the uh, silk touch shovel and some more special items. But yes, in all in all, in total, I've got myself... Three gold blocks, two ingots, and a couple of nuggets, which is pretty, pretty good to be fair. But you could definitely see how lengthy and how slow this process is. But yes, I decided to make myself a campfire. And uh, look away now if you're not um, a big fan of animal cruelty. <laughs> oh, God. This is a good idea I thought I had. Um, I thought I'll just um, open up the trap door with the chickens and um say goodbye to them <laughs> genuinely it was quite funny and i have no idea why i cut that down with a uh, a sword um but yes literally grab myself a uh, a slab here we're gonna place it there so they can't jump out and say goodbye <laughs> oh the noise the noise poor chickens but anyway that will actually save me using up fuel and um you know or wood or whatever and I, I get a load of chicken out of it and feathers which is lovely but look what happened there was a couple of baby chickens still stuck in there so that really paid off but yes as i got water now as well i can uh, obviously hydrate my crops which is quite nice so obviously i got wheat there in the middle and over the other sides i got beetroot and uh, not beetroot sorry um i got pumpkin and um, yes, I can literally hydrate these now, which is really nice. So hopefully that will speed up a bit of crop growth. And then I just grabbed some trap doors that I got kicking around. And I can just place these around to obviously stop me from walking into water. So it's like a solid block. So now I decide to do something very, very ambitious and crazy. And this is um, a bit of a weird idea I had. Now, I'm pretty sure in an, in an upcoming update of the caves and cliffs update this isn't a thing but i know you can turn zombies into drowns so this is kind of what i was going for what do drown drop when you kill them gold ingots so yes i decided to try and make myself a bit of a uh, a drown farm that's what i was gonna say not a zombie farm it's a zombie farm but a drown version so i wanted to do a bit of testing here and i spotted this uh, little guy here with an iron shovel so I really, really want to get the iron shovel. There we go. Cool. And uh, as you can see, I got myself an enderman and a zombie. But what I'm going to do is dig myself a little 2x2, two two, a little hole here. Well, it's 2x3, actually, I should say. And I'm going to start filling this thing up with water. Um, but I brought the cauldron just to help me um, carry some water across and stuff a bit easier. 
There we go. We should have made an infinite water source look. And this zombie is just in the boat. Unfortunately, there's a spider here. And um, yeah, it's about to become a daytime, sadly. So yeah, I need to kind of hurry my butt up here. <laughs> come on, zombie. You got to come with me. And we're going to put you in this hole and see how this kind of mechanic works. Because honestly, guys, I've never done a drown farm in my life. Um, you know, they drop tridents, which are useful. But you see so many drowned in the oceans and in rivers and stuff. I've never, ever needed to make one. But yes, I gather up some more dirt. I thought I still had water in there, but unfortunately I didn't. Um, but I can just grab a bit of water from here. There we go. And fill this up and cover him up. And hopefully that will change him into a drowned, right? That's my plan. So after that, I thought, you know what? I'm going to make this into an actual farm <laughs> as best I can. So as you can see, I decided to dig out a big hole. I covered it in trapdoors, filled it up with water and basically made a, a, a drowned contraption thingy. I don't really know what I want to call this, but basically... As we know, mobs fall off in the trapdoors. You know, they think they're full blocks. So they will just literally walk in there. And there's two trapdoors on top of each other in there. So I can actually close it like it's a lid. But I can still see through it. Because obviously, it's an acacia trapdoor. So yeah. All I need to do now is wait for nighttime and test this thing. And I decided to put boats around as well. Just in case. As a safety, super safety option. But yes. Night has approached. And I thought... I'll kill these couple of creepers because we don't want any accidents. But I could definitely see a couple of zombies there in my distance. There. So what we're going to do is punch these guys and lure them to me. And hopefully this actually works. <laughs> I Honestly, at this current stage, I'm still debating whether Drowned actually dropped gold ingots. I don't know if they changed it because I'm I'm pretty sure, in, in like I say, in Caves and Cliffs update, there we go, it's worked. Um... They actually drop copper ingots now, right? But yes, when a zombie goes in there, I can literally spin around in this kind of funky circle and uh, close up this, and they are stuck in there. And over time, they will just become a drowned. As you just heard. <laughs> so no more zombie, it's a drowned. So that means it should drop tridents or have tridents randomly, uh, nautilus shells, armor, and like I say, gold ingots. That's what we're really after. But yes, I got a bit of a crew following me here. And this was the ultimate test. Um, kind of got a bit scary here at a bit of point because I, I stupidly need to leave these things open. But as you can see, this definitely does work. And the best bit about it is because it's daytime, they should burn. But if they're in there, they don't burn because the sunlight obviously sets them on fire because they're in water, it puts it out, which is nice. But yes, zombies are in there. There's about six or seven zombies in there. Literally, close this thing up, wait for them to change, and then all I need to do is kill them. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Love this little mechanic. It's so cool. So obviously I made a lot of trapdoors. I decide to actually go ahead and upgrade my tree farm. <laughs> now I've got stone, it's not a biggie. I can obviously chop down trees quite fast. So I made it like this and I got torches so they will grow at night. And this is my tree farm for now. Another night has approached and um, as you can see, they will just walk in there, which is fantastic. But I really wanted to show you this clip because that zombie walked in there with an iron sword, right? And there was also a pillager here, which was quite strange. I think there might have been a mini pillager of patrol, whatever you call them. And I also tested it with um, zombie villagers. They do not seem to convert into drowned, unfortunately. But yes, the zombie has actually changed into a drowned. As you can see, he's holding the sword. But the beauty of this is, if they drop that sword, it'll be 100% repaired. Which is really weird. Now, I'm pretty sure that it's a bug, maybe? But it's the same sort of thing with armor. If they're wearing armor, if they're a zombie and they, they turn into a drown, but they were previously wearing, like, chainmail armor, it will more than likely be fully repaired. I don't know why this does that. 
But you can see, I've got an iron sword on me. I've got loads of gold now. And that iron sword has hardly got any damage because I've been literally using it. It was a brand new sword. But yes, more wood. Constantly need wood because it's the only building block I've got. And yes, the smelly phantoms are back. So this time, I wanted to get my own back on them. <laughs> and I trapped one in a boat, which was fantastic. But yes, there's so many of them. I genuinely don't know why there is so many phantoms. But yes, there's another one sweeping at me. Ooh, there we go. He's gone in the boat as well, which is pretty cool. More XP that I really don't need. But yes, this became a bit of a problem. I uh, don't want to sleep, as you know. Um, I want to get all these zombies turned into drowns so I can get the golden apple done. But oh, mixing phantoms at night with mobs is not cool. So I decided to make a bit of a... I don't even know what you want to call that, a roof kind of thing? Um, just to prevent the actual, um, you know, the, the phantom sweeping down on me because I don't know if you know, but when you're only wearing like leather armor, they, they take two bites at you. You're pretty much a goner. So you can see the zombies that obviously went in there at the start have changed. And unfortunately, they don't actually drop anything, which is a bit of a shame to be fair. Um, but yes, at least the phantoms cannot bite me. But look how many there is, guys. There's actually six of them. <laughs> Once I saw six, I was like, no, no, Dan. No, Dan, you need to go to bed. Just go to bed because that is way too many. So to avoid this situation again, I decided to craft up a load of boats and put it on a roof. And if there is phantoms, they will get stuck in there and they should not spawn again, hopefully. And if it becomes daytime, they will just burn and die. So this was my idea anyway. Um, it theory it should work because it worked earlier with the boat. So we shall see, hopefully. We need more cobble constantly because I want to build a bit of a roof in a minute. So I managed to get myself a two zombie villagers look. And I thought, oh, I'm going to trap him in here. And uh, yeah, we'll kill one of them because I only need one villager because I can only get one villager. Because I've only got one apple, unfortunately. Um, but yes, we trapped that guy in a boat, as you can see. And I punched him to make sure he doesn't despawn. He's obviously in a boat, which is beautiful. And we're going to leave him to it. That's all that. And um, I end up getting all of the gold I actually need. So I decide I better break all of these things. I couldn't remember if a cauldron actually is a villager thing. I don't think it is. But I was a, a bit skeptical. You know, I, I wasn't too sure if it if it was or not so i just lifted it up anyway i'm pretty sure i should have took the brewing stand as well but basically i'm getting ready to cure a zombie villager look i've got enough gold to make the golden apple just take my apple there we go and i'm waiting for this whatever i put in there a helmet or something to become a nugget so i can make this into an ingot and there we go it's done and uh yeah let's make this golden apple done nice and I just need to grab a potion as well. So I'll put all these bits away. And my weakness potion is in here. There we go. And uh, yes, let's go and cure this villager, shall we? That we just captured. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened there, guys. I genuinely don't know what happened. It just died. I don't know what happened. So anyway... We slept through the night or the night passed. I decide I'm not going to stand around and do nothing. I decided to go big here and make myself a ginormous, massive area for farming crops. Now, this is solely for villagers in the future, um, just to help with breeding and trading to get loads of emeralds. So I decided to make a three by 22, if I'm not mistaken, um, lines of carrots, wheat, and potatoes, because that's what I've got, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. I put stairs everywhere so I don't fall in the water. And um, like I say, that kind of used up my whole day. So I don't really, I didn't need to, you know, just chop trees for a change, you know. It's a bit of a different scenery. That was the idea. Um, but it's also for the future. That was the idea as well. But yes, another night is approached. And I really want the night because I want to find a zombie villager. That's all I want. Because I want emeralds. And with these emeralds, I can actually buy hopefully a sapling and some other good stuff from the actual wandering trader i.e buckets or seeds or sand or 
pickles or dyes. I don't know. Anything that guy sells. But yes, eventually I come across this dude. I capture him. It took me a very long time to find one. I'm not going to lie here. And uh, I wasn't going to fall for this mistake again. So I put him on the grass blocks. Maybe he died because of the uh, half slabs. But yes, I throw the potion. I feed him the apple. And hopefully, he's going to turn into a villager. And I just put some dirt around him as well, just to prevent him walking away. And there we go. He's changed. Look. Now, I also put a composter down as well. So he's instantly become a farmer. But um, I, like I say, I've tried to cut down this video as much as I can. So you don't have to see a lot of boring stuff. It was like 14 hours long, as I said. But yes, he's a farmer. He's selling wheat, which is nice. So I decided to make this dude a bed so he can actually reset his trades as well when he goes to sleep and stuff. But yes, all we need to do now, there we go, it's linked up, is trade with him. And we're going to get a load of emeralds, hopefully. Now, I'm really interested in the pumpkin trade. Look, it's one for one emerald. So if I go in and a trade with him now. Oh no, where has he gone? Da -da, he's there. <laughs> Genuinely, oh, that was my reaction. Like, what? He's despawned. He's disappeared. Um, but yes, you can see. Look how many emeralds I've got already. Villagers in Minecraft are just so OP, in my opinion. Um, but yes, we can get food from this dude now. We can get pumpkin pies. So do I actually really need cows anymore and chickens? That's the question. I don't really know. But yes, night has approached. I've played with him quite a bit, actually. And uh, now I've slept through the night just because I want to continue upgrading this guy and see what his last trade is. And there we go. We've got him to max level. And it's golden carrots, guys. Golden carrots, man. Unbelievable. These things are like the best thing in Minecraft for saturation. Thank you very much, villager. Thank you very, very much. But yes, another night approaches, as you can see. And I spotted something here. And I really wanted to show you this. I threw some gear down, um, and look what has actually happened. A skeleton has actually picked up my stone sword for I don't know what reason, and he's actually equipped it. So once I kill this dude here with a bow, you're going to see that a skeleton is literally holding a stone sword. Why? I don't know. But yes, to prove my point as earlier, as I was saying... We got another zombie here with a sword, but look at that. Sharpness 2 completely repaired. I swear it's a bug, but I'm not going to report it because it's a good bug. <laughs> but yes, we're getting more gold as well because, again, in the future, I want to get myself another villager, but I need that apple. So I may as well get enough gold to make the golden apple. That's what I'm trying to say. So I need eight ingots again. And then I decide to cook up a load of cobblestone that I've been grinding away for just to build with and decorate my house so a wandering trader just spawned in and i just bought a couple of things again i'm still luring zombies to the actual um thing and here i'm just showing you i did a bit of decorations one day and that was basically of making a roof <laughs> like i say i'm trying to get out of my comfort zone here but with a block palette you've got which is literally stone and acacia and a bit of dirt <laughs> It's quite hard to make a roof, but um, yeah, this is kind of what I came up with. It's not amazing. I'm not a great builder, but I thought it was okay. It made it a bit more cozy for me. And um, I'm literally just using cobblestone stairs and cobblestone. And I was using um, acacia logs just to make some beams, like wooden beams. So it's like got a bit of structure to it, if you know what I mean. Obviously, I could see pumpkins and stuff are growing. You could see I'm literally just grinding out here speeding all this up just so you kind of get a feel how long and the grind this has actually been it's been a quite a nightmare but i've really really enjoy it though guys i'm not going to stress that it's been really really fun but yes more cobblestone is required to finish off the roof and again we got more zombies in here we got another one with sword and look he just dropped another gold ingot <laughs> but these guys are pretty pretty op as well because you know if you give them a weapon well, if a zombie has a weapon, it will always get repaired, as I keep saying. But yes, I need to finish off this roof. And uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a ladder just to get up there. And I'm not going to speed this part up. I'll just show you quickly. I was just filling in these little gaps with cobblestone. And I've done all that now. And with the rest of the stone that is left over, I just wanted to add a bit of uh, decoration to it, if you know what I mean. A bit of more var var variety, I should say. 
um, just to spice it up a bit, you know, make it a bit better. Um, and also inside the actual house, I, like I said, I wanted to make some wooden beams. So it's actually like the building's actually got support. And I thought this is a good excuse to use these mushroom blocks. <laughs> so I just used them for the ends. Bit weird. So I decided in the end to tear down the chicken coop. And um, this made me think of something. I was playing with water and I was like, you know what? I can um, harvest my crops like this. I wonder if I can make myself a dispenser system. And then I um, also traded with the villager and I, another wandering trader has appeared. But this guy was selling sugarcane, beetroot and fishing buckets, acacia saplings and red sand. So I bought it all. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got two buckets there out of um, some emeralds, but... Sorry, fish. You, you you can live another day. But yes, with the redstone that I got from the witches, I could obviously go ahead and make myself some dispensers, as I was saying earlier. And now this is a very tricky thing because redstone is not very hard to come by. You know, it's very hard to come by, I should say. Sorry. It's um a pain, really, to get redstone. You know, witches don't always drop redstone. And... Um, I was lucky enough that I could pull this off. Um, so yeah, I decided to um, go ahead and make myself an automatic wheat farm. Or semi-automatic, I should say, with what I've got. Um, so yeah, obviously I bought the buckets. I fill them up with water. We pull that. That fills that. And it goes, trickles down all the way. And it should take all the um, crops with it, right? So I've lined them up properly. I make these little holes like this. And um, I fill these up and a bit like I did in my base, I'm going to put trapdoors on top of that. I literally change this all to farmland and it will be hydrated forever, which is pretty, pretty cool. Next, what I need to do is obviously put down the actual seeds. Boom. And hopefully it should be all set up. Oh my God, there's another trader. So you can see how long that has actually taken me to do. Because another trader turned up. But this trader had not great stuff. But I did actually buy the brain coral blocks and another couple of sea pickles. Because then I could actually um, grow these things and then compost them. I needed more wood for another project I was going to work on in a minute. And uh, as you can see, some of them are grown and I wanted to test it. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't tested this yet. It's very, very satisfying to uh, to do this. But yes, I could definitely improve this if I had more redstone and packed dice and stuff like that. But unfortunately, I'm limited. But I, in all in all, I think I did a good job there. But the main reason I'm getting all this wheat is because, again, in the future, I need to breed villagers and get bread. But yes, look what just happened. <laughs> Dan got some more redstone, which is awesome. And yet again, another villager, dude. So yes, we ate, but he actually sold packed ice, which is fantastic. And I also bought the ink sacks just to make myself a bit of a diary. <laughs> oh, God. It's a day unknown. Today, I bought myself some ink sacks, which I used to begin a dairy on this strange world. <laughs> Dying spelling. It's supposed to say diary on strange world. But yes, I started to write a bit of a diary just because to keep on track, um, keep myself a bit of sane. But obviously, I bought some packed ice and I wanted to use this to push the items when they get broken from the actual dispenser and the water all into one center location, basically, as you can see. That was my little uh, idea there. Now, I also thought, as I got water now, I can actually go fishing as well. So I decided to make myself a fishing rod. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to have a bit of a fish right here. <laughs> and um, yeah, I thought I'm going to fish up 10 items. That's all I'm going to do, 10, and see what happens. Literally, all I'm getting is cod. And then this happens, guys. You ain't never going to believe that. I genuinely was like, what? That is the best fishing rod you could possibly get in Minecraft. I got that on my 10th cast. Or was it even my 8th cast or 9th? I don't know. Jeez. Unbelievable. I, You guys, honestly, I just can't believe it. This run has been so lucky. But yes, 
I got enough redstone to fire two of them at a time. The third one I still have to kind of do manually, unfortunately. Boom, there we go. And that should all go down the bottom. And then I realized I shouldn't jump down like that. I need to um, jump down from the other side, but you can see it all goes into one central location, which is really, really nice. And then eventually when I get iron and stuff like that from an iron golem and stuff farm, I can actually um, make hoppers and stuff, which is nice. I also made another bed that you might've just saw as well, just for the next villager, hopefully if I can get him. Now, I decided to chop a load of wood and then all of a sudden it starts to rain. And you know, rain and my OP fishing rod is a winner. So there were creeper blew up a long time ago in this area here next to my farm. I just turned it into a bit of a rubbish crappy lake and I fished away. And look what I caught, a saddle. I was so happy about that because I completely forgot that you get saddles in fishing loot table. I stumbled across this black horse. The first horse I found, by the way, let me just point that out. And the second time I sat on it, it loved me. It was in love mode. So I decided to put the saddle on this thing and um, check this thing out, guys. It's very, very fast. <laughs> and it jumps extremely high. This is an absolutely phenomenal horse. Now, why is a horse so useful for something like this? It's just so I can get around. Look at this. I can literally jump on my roof if I really want to with this thing. Horses on Minecraft Bedrock Edition don't make you take any full damage, which is really weird. But I can also climb up my trees as well, which is really, 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 really helpful. And, um, you know, and just in catching those last little straggly little logs that, you know, that the leaves never break down or whatever. Very, very handy stuff. But the main thing I want the horse for is to get around faster, as you'll see in a minute. I can literally just ride the horse and do things really fast. Now, I started to make a bit of a structure area here just to make a hostile mob grinder. That's what I was gonna do. So that's what I did. And then night approached and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use this guy just to ride around, see if I can find zombies and skeletons that are wearing decent armor that I need or holding any tools, but mainly I was looking for witches. And yes, the horse was in love mode because I was feeding it some carrots um, because it took some damage from a creeper explosion. <laughs> and I didn't want it to die. But yes, all that over. I did get some bits, but nothing too fancy, nothing really to show you on the camera. But yes, I decided to make a start on the actual mob grinder now as I've acquired a quite a lot of wood. So here we go. So this is a kind of a bit of a base of a off of my good friend Lister's kind of design that I know works really well on a sky block, but I've never made one on a, a flat world before. So I wasn't really too sure how this was gonna work. But yes, I built it up 22 blocks high um, just so I could maybe catch any zombies out or skeletons that are actually wearing armor and kind of nick it off them if I could. Um, that was my idea. And hopefully, wow, well, the witches would survive, right, as well. But yes, standard kind of mob grinder. Nothing too fancy going on here. And uh, I noticed a pillager patrol. <laughs> now this time round, if I get the bad omen effect, which I get, I've actually got technically a village, right? So I decide I'll jump down. I better go to sleep and we'll con continue to construct the actual mob grinder in the morning, basically. And look what happened. <laughs> I'm going to sleep and there's a raid about to happen. Um, I genuinely like really started to panic. I was like, well, I've got all these quite good bows here. I better take them. And um, yeah, we're just going to go for this then. <laughs> I mean, I've only done a few raids in my time, but Jesus, raids are very, very OP. You get emeralds, you get loads of iron gear. You can get enchanted books and stuff. So yeah. I was actually really happy about this. During the raid, typical, a wandering trader spawned up, but he had a birch sapling. Lovely little sapling, but I would rather have an oak or a dark oak, because I need apples, sir. So please give me them, please. But anyway, I bought it anyway, because I'm rich, so why not? Continuing on, we um, obviously are battling this raid, but I wanted to show you this little clip, because look how OP this little moat thing I did at the start is. It actually traps everything. <laughs> oh, this is so good, man. So yeah, the raid was like, like 
Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm not joking. I could just stand back and kill these guys. And yes, that is an actual Evolker. And uh, I am level 51, by the way. And I'm about to get myself a totem of undying here in a super flat world. I genuinely have never, ever done anything like this before. And, you know, all of this has happened from a bonus chest. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. But yes, I'm getting saddles for days. I'm getting iron gear now. I've got an iron axe. I've got an iron pickaxe. I know I picked up one. I end up killing these guys. And this is actually the final creature to kill for the actual raid to be finished. So I actually done a raid in a flat world. Something I've never done before. Very fun. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so easy. So after the raid has been done, I basically just go back to continue what I was doing, which is the mob grinder. So now I can actually finish this thing because it's daytime. And as you can see, I will just be putting up blocks everywhere, basically. It's free, free tool, and I am just putting the blocks above it. If you use half slabs on bedrock condition, it actually still lets light through. But I use torches in the end just to save up some wood. And this happened! If I did not have that totem, that would have been GG right there. So unfortunately, I've wasted one of my totems. And I was really, really panicking then because I was like, oh my god, no. All my hours and hard work is gone. But yes, this is the idea of the trapdoor. I could get in and out of here, look, quite easily. But that is it. The mob grinder has been done, which is fantastic, which I was so happy about. I managed to pull that off in like two or three days. It was about three days in Minecraft. Um, just because of the raid, basically. Yes, I will sleep the night through. And I actually managed to hear somebody open the door, which is actually a, uh, a stinking spider. So we shall uh, say goodbye to him. And uh, yes, I'm going to grab myself another totem. But look at all the gear I've got. And we actually ended up getting five totems in total, by the way, which was quite nice. So I ended up putting torches around everywhere just to light this area up. And this is kind of how the mechanic works. You can see I can lift the trap doors up and stuff like that, which is quite nice. So I can get in and out of there quite easily. Now I've got enough redstone to fire this baby in one go. Look, as you can see, I just used it. And you can see all of that juicy goodness going into one little area like that, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I've pretty much got a pretty fully automatic kind of mob farm here. Well, crop farm, I should say. And I've also got a fully automatic mob farm, as you can see. I got my words tangled up there. Tangled up, I should say. But guys, that has been day one to day 100 in a flat world with nothing but <laughs> a bonus chest. And you can definitely see this thing is working. Um, if you, like I say, if you want to try it for yourself, you can. It's in the description of the video. But anyway, I'm Damrod Probs. Thank you very, very much for watching as always. And I really hope that you enjoyed that. Something very different for me on the channel and it's taken me a very long time to do.